thank you so much for joining oh, us. Fantastic, yeah, it's my pleasure. There you Andre, go. Thank you for joining us on the show. Now, as always, I do a very quick intro for those who don't somehow know who you are, but this is Andrei Shevchenko, winner of the Ballon d'Or in 2004, winner of the Champions League, 67 goals in European competitions and nearly 500 career goals for Kiev, AC Milan and Chelsea. He's now the coach of the Ukraine national team. He's a politician. He's our absolute number one guest we've had on the show. A huge welcome, Andre, to Offered and Talks this afternoon. Now, a declaration of interest. I am a big Liverpool fan. Henry is a big Chelsea fan. And uh, it's incredibly exciting to have you on the show. Uh, the average age of listener is about 12 on the show. So about 12 years old. So I'd like to go back to the start and ask, um, by 12, did you know you were going to be a professional football player? Uh, I was dreaming to be a professional football player. I already started to uh, train with, uh, in academy Dynamo Kiev. I was doing my first steps, but uh, it was my, my dream in the beginning. I, was, uh, I remember I probably was six years old when I started touching ball, and from there I get in love with football and you know f all, 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 f f even now I'm still love football I'm still dreaming something important and I can I ask we are a, a company that, that that loves mentoring we believe in the role of mentors did you have mentors when you were growing up and how did they help you with the distractions of becoming a professional footballer you know uh, I I, I had very good coaches and I had uh, a very good uh, people around me who helped me a lot to, uh, you know, find my way, uh, especially uh, uh, in uh, that important environment around what I grew up. And then, uh, you know, I tried to get discipline, my discipline worked very well. So would you say that was the key clincher for you, was the practice and the discipline you put into your... Exactly, yeah, because I was very talented, but I was a little bit destructive when I was young, you know, as a lot of nice thing around. And my coach is always, uh, you know, put me that, that direction, just try to be... Uh, you know, very positive, try to be discipline yourself very well and it's always helped you in the life. For those uh, out there listening who want to have a career in football, can you take us through the day, a day in the life of Andrei Shevchenko when you were 18, 19, 20, sort of at the, at the peak of your, of your footballing career? What was that like? Uh, it was it was like living living in dream, you know. My life it was quite simple. A lot of training, and then uh, I was playing in Dynamo Kiev, playing already for national team in Ukraine, and uh, just you know just full dedication to the sport and try to uh, create uh, my life around the sport. I was very at that time, you know. I was very professional already, you know, put my schedule, eat nice food, you know, go to sleep, uh, dedicate to training very well, and then try to create all the environment, friends, and my schedule around only my work football. Great. So you are, you moved to Milan. You haven't yet won the Ballon d'Or. It's a few years before that. You're playing against Juventus. It's 2001. You pick up the ball. You go past Edgar Davids from about 30 yards out. You lob the ball over arguably the best keeper, uh, Guy, uh, Buffon, yeah. uh, to score one of the best goals I've ever seen. Where does that rank? Is that the best goal you've ever scored? Have you scored, have you scored a better goal than that? Uh, it's one of the best goals. You know, going through my career, uh, I... I, I score a lot of nice goals, but is this is one of you know most beautiful goals what I scored. But also you know I I could remember like maybe it's not that nice, but for me I think it's it's very important to to score important goal like 
you know, a semi-final of the Champions League or final of the Champions League or through my career as a couple goals with national team because I finished my career in 2012 playing the um, European Cup in Ukraine and Poland, what we host the uh, um, European Cup. And then that was uh, first opening uh, match, uh, Ukraine, Sweden, and uh, uh, we won two one. I scored two incredible goals. And going back to my memory, you know, is even it was not maybe nicest goal in, in, but I still remember very well because it's, you know, such a such a great feeling, such a good energy around, and especially playing in front of. Uh, uh, my people, first game in European Cup, first time in Ukraine. So it's that balance between technique and memory. I like that. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter how technically beautiful a goal is, as long as the memory is special. Exactly. Can I, can I ask, for those who perhaps are too young to see you uh, play, why were you so good? Is it the finishing? Was it your heading? Is it your um, movement off the ball? What made you such a good football player? I think it was a mix between everything, you know. Uh, my movement was very good. Uh, I, I was especially with my my finishing because I spent a lot of times, a lot of practice times to to get that uh, finishing in in very very good level, and uh, I was focusing in that one. I think, you know, if you give me just little chances, I always score. I know Walter wants to ask you about a certain final and I'll bring you on to happier memories afterwards. Okay. I do, Andrew. So, so taking you forward, you win the Ballon d'Or in the early 2000s. You then win the Champions League uh, against Juventus and you score the winning penalty. We're then in extra time in 2005. Um, Liverpool have come back from 3-0 down. It's the best game of football I've ever seen. It's extra time. You meet Serginho's, Serginho's cross with a powerful downward header. And the Polish keeper, Dudek, somehow keeps that ball out twice. Um, what did he say to you after that game? And can you tell us about your experience in playing arguably the best game of football ever? Uh, yeah, it's... It didn't finish well for us. I mean, for, for Liverpool fans, it was amazing uh, time. I think it's, it, I'm agree, it's one of the most beautiful game because uh, I think the Milan play incredible first half and then the Liverpool play incredible second half. And then, you know, I had that chances. Uh, I don't know, somehow the ball didn't go uh, but is is beauty of the football, you know. You can you can calculate everything, you know. That was incredible save from Dudak, and I, I spoke many times. He's a great guy, great goalkeeper. Uh, we play a few times some exhibition game, and then actually, I always when I see him, I always ask him how you did it. That I still not re I, I still not believe, you know. Uh, it was a great save from you. Uh, I think his is, is quality is a great instinct. He just put the arms and then uh, I think it was an incredible save. That, that, first, that first half of football, the Crespo goal, it was a Kaka who scored one of the goals, your goal. Take us through that. I mean, I've never seen football like it in that first half. Yeah, it, look, it, the, the beauty of the football is that, you know, uh, I, I give big credit for Liverpool because is that probably ment mentally was so strong, never give up, you know, trying always the best. Uh, one of the best players in English football, what I think is uh, Steven Gerrard, uh, had the incredible power to bring that team and then uh, uh, in a that that team was really need the captain like him, and then they did it. And such a young age, that that was his uh, incredible credit for for the final. 
Well, the, the good thing is it took Liverpool a long time to win again. They were, they were, they were not great for a while. But you move to, to the greatest British team, English team there is. When you moved to Chelsea, what was that transition like from Serie A to move to the Premier League? How do they, how do they differ and what was that experience like for you? Yeah, it's, uh, it was great. I mean, uh, uh, English football, uh, it was start to peak in the great level. And then it's a lot of uh, uh, big sign being uh, through the couple years, you know. Uh, uh, for me, moving to Chelsea was the uh, great experience. Chelsea was amazing, amazing team. Jose Mourinho was coach. Uh, Lampard, Drogba, uh, Terry, Michael Ballack, SM. Uh, incredible team. I have a, such a good time. Uh, of course, uh, it's only bad memory from for me, from that time, I was I had a lot of injury, and then uh, I feel a little bit. You know, it couldn't be so much better for me if I not get that injury, uh, because I feel like I could play a lot better than if his injury didn't stop me. Did you find a big difference between the the styles of football and the way that those leagues ran, or was the transition? People talk a lot about is, is, Of course, it's a quite, is a different. I mean, the Spanish football have its own style. Uh, uh, English football have its own style. Italian football. But in the end, you know, when they, when you, if you play internationally, you play Champions League game, you, you, you play the international game, uh, the, 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 the some, some level of the team is always, you know, very strong, is always there. I mean, it's a little bit different. I think English football is uh, a little bit more physical and speed. There's a lot of speed. And then that was the reason when you have to be uh, 100% fit, no injury, you have to be young, you have to be very strong. What Italian football is, is uh, a lot more tactic is uh, it's still, you know, any, any, any level of uh, um, uh, big football, you, you have to perform very well. And um, Andre, you've, you've obviously played with, um, I mean, the list of names you've played with or against is amazing. Kaká, Perlo, Maldini, Seidorf, Del Piero, Zidane, Totti, Ronaldo. If you had to choose... And sorry to put you on the spot. If you had to choose the best football player you've played with and against, who would you say? Depends from the position, you know. And uh, like, I think the best player would have played against for me was Zidane. You know, like if you take, we will bring the probably through career, I think there's one of the greatest, it was Zidane. And then I play with, a lot of great players, but I'm going to choose two names, probably Paolo Mardini and Kaká. I hope you say that. <laughs> I've got to ask, you then move into management a little later down the line. You're currently, for the second stint, Ukraine's manager. What was that transition like? We've got football player, manager, politician. They're big, different roles. Yeah, I've, I've said that I, I give up my politician career because I can't do a lot of things. You know, I just concentrate to coach now. And then it was a great experience. You know, I've been coaching Ukrainian national team for the last four years. We achieved some incredible result. We qualified for the Euro. It's supposed to be playing right now, but uh, we move, is everything moving for next year? And... Uh, is a, Ukraine is a very young team, very good one. We have a lot of great players. There's a few playing in, in England here. Uh, Yarmolenko played for West Ham. Zinchenko play in Manchester City. And uh, we qualified, didn't lose in any games. We beat uh, European champion uh, Portugal. And I think it's a great result for us. And I'm so excited about it. What's, what's your style of football? What kind of football do you like to play as a manager? 
we, we play, uh, I like a combination, I like attractive football, I like uh, uh, balanced football. We, we, the we team we built from the back, we try to keep it the ball, we try to create some combination, you know, is is a style what I like. So an easier time being a football coach than a politician or just more rewarding? I think uh, I, I try uh, I try to do something for my country and then uh, uh, I finished my career. Uh, I had you know, some transition time between decide what I want to do. And I feel like, you know, maybe it's a good time to do something different and try to, to, to give something for my country because I was living abroad for many years. You know, my, my experience from living in different country, maybe, you know, I can, I can help to change a couple of things in Ukraine. But uh, after a few months, you know, I realized uh, it's, it's, it's not for me, you know. And then I still involved in a lot of different projects, but not in the politics. I'm doing a lot of charity, you know, I'm supporting a lot of things in Ukraine. Uh, but uh, I left the politician career and concentrated on something different. I'm, I'm keen we take a question from, from some of the kids out there who are, they're furiously scrawling in. We've had 181 questions. Okay. I can't, I can't answer, get you to answer even three of them. But there's a good one here, which was that if you were a Premier League manager right now and you had all the money there is, who would you want to sign? That is a, a very difficult. Uh, I Maybe. think you buy a very like one players. You can pick a couple if you want to pick some variety. You know, of, of course, uh, there's you're gonna be some Liverpool, Chelsea uh, players like uh, uh, I think the De Bruyne is a I very like the he, his style he playing is amazing player Salah, um, uh, Kanté. Uh, so we've got two out of three there that Chelsea let go. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Van Dijk is one of the. I think is a he is a great defender. He is um, probably man of the Liverpool in the moment. He certainly is. Well, we're hoping the season is gonna. Well, it is restarting, and I'm hoping to lift the first trophy in a long time. Just some comments, Andre, coming in from from children. Andre Shevchenko is the best player I've ever seen. He's so cool. You're incredible. Uh, I mean, there are so many comments. We are going to come on to a quick fire round where we take questions from the crowd and it's like a yeah, yes, no, or a, just a short answer. But you're a father now and you have four. Am I right in saying you have four, four children? Oh, yeah. Is that, uh, firstly, congratulations. Um, secondly, is there any, I mean, are they playing football? Are they going to grow up and be football players, do you think? Yeah, my second, my second son, Christian, is in Chelsea Academy, is playing for under 13. And is there, is there similarities between being a football manager and a father? <laughs> I don't want to compare him and me, you know. I just, I just give, give him his chance to, exactly. to, to play. Fantastic. Right. right. I think it's time for a little quick fire. What do we think, Walter? Certainly do. So just, just five questions, Andre, and then we will let you go. And thank you so much for giving up your time this afternoon. Uh, we're going to start with uh, a question from uh, Will Bryson, who says, um, who was the better player, Drogba or Lampard? Different position, but both great. Fantastic. How about best manager you've played under, best coach? Uh, best coach for me was my. I, I have to pick between Carlo Ancelotti and Lobanovsky. Uh, where would you like to see football improve? In what area? Uh, I think in attacking. You know, I like I like attacking style. I like uh, control the games. I, th that was actually the football moving a lot, like. Uh, Guardiola style, club right. little bit, you know. As... How about most memorable career moment? 
Champions League final. Champions League final. What a moment. What a moment. Well, I think we'll leave it there because... Uh, there are too many to answer. Too, too many to answer. Yeah. I mean, from a personal perspective, we, we grew up, Henry and I, watching football. And when we were 9, 10, 11, 12, you were winning Champions Leagues and Ballon d'Or. So it's a great privilege for us to be to have you on the show. So thank you. Yeah. And also for these kids to listen to someone of, of such incredible experience. And also, I said before you appeared with us, a real gentleman of the game. So, so thank you very much. No, guys, thank you very much too. No, no. I, have no, no, I wondered, do you have a biscuit with you by any chance? Yes, of course. It's right here. Yeah. So, Andre, this is a very simple game. I'm going to ask you to break your biscuit in half. Okay. That's a bit smaller. You can take the smaller, smaller bit. Okay. My one's very small. And you're going to put it on your forehead. And without touching it, a bit like, we'll see your heading skills. You have to try and get the biscuit to your mouth. Okay. Without dropping it. And we have hundreds of kids at home who are playing it. So what we're going to do you is we're going to split it. it. Okay. And you can get as many goes as you want. Starting in... Time for, for, oh, he's already started. Three, two, one, go for it. Let's see. Can he get, you can get another go. You can keep going. You can yeah, keep yeah. going. My okay. advice is not too fast. Can you beat Andrei Shevchenko at Biscuit Face? Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> the idea is. Oh my God. It's oh. hard, isn't it? It's hard. I'm going to have a go for I'm going to have a go as well. <laughs> Just three, three, three big football players just playing the biscuit fist together. Oh, yeah. um, we're going to stop there. He gets one more go. We'll give him one go because he's Andrei Shevchenko. No, I can't get it. And Andre, Sorry. what I got to ask you is scoring a header in a Champions League final or playing biscuit face, which is more difficult? I think in the mo right now is a biscuit probably. <laughs> <laughs> We're very grateful. Thank you so, so much for joining us. Thank you very much. I look Guys, forward to seeing you soon. And I'm I'm uh, enjoy the golf this summer. We know you're a passionate golf fan. Yeah. So Take care, you. everyone. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.